I have this museum here at the Sugar House on Big Field Road. My husband Joe likes to do maple sugaring, so I'm helping him here now. Terrific. How long has this been in operation? Remind me. Since about 2006. Wow. And how many taps do you have now? 3,300 taps. Oh. There are about 1,000 here, and up in Jericho, he leaves the land for 2,000 more. So he has to carry the sack from Jericho to here, oil. And meanwhile, he's got collection paint around on the six wheel property. The, the, set, the set temperature for today, according to the barometric pressure, is 219.7 degrees. And it automatically comes on when it's two tenths of a degree above that number. And then it'll keep going down to add more light syrup in with the heavier syrup so it's all balanced out. And you'll see the temperature keep, keep going down on it. The year before I built this sugar house, I bought some land up in uh, Westford that had a bunch of hemlocks on it. And I decided that I would have that milled up to make the sugar house here when I when I built it. And there, on that property, there was an old um, uh, there was an old sugar house, and it had this record board on here where they entered whatever they were doing. And so I, they're they're just going to bulldoze the sugar house. So I took this board, and that gave me the idea to do what you see up on the wall up here. So those are all my records from 2004 to 2021. They're a lot more elaborate than what he did on this, but it's cool. Great idea. So when my husband was building a house across from Chapin's Sugar Orchard, he cut down a big tree, and this is a picture of the maple tree, a slab that he had from Chapin Sugar Woods. And it shows how long ago he tacked it, and the spout marks are still in it. Back then, they might have used wooden spouts. Spouts have changed over the past 160, 70 years. They started as wooden spouts, and then they became metal spouts, and now they're plastic spouts. There's over 300 different styles of spouts, and Joe likes to collect them. The beginning started with wooden spouts stuck in the tree and it would drop down to one of these um, collection tanks and people, the Indians, would put hot rocks in it to boil the water out of the sap. The Boy Scouts studied that and did it and it does work. If you look up you can see how maple sugaring has evolved from those rocks to kettles. It was one kettle at first, then they realized you could use three kettles and just make the sap get less and less water so it got thicker and thicker so they poured it from kettle to kettle. That's where you got the sugar shack that was out in the woods because people would gather together and stay there with shelter to boil sap and it would take a long time. After the kettles, they had open hearts in the woods this was a square tin um, pan that they would boil. There are those are out in the woods any place you go where there was farming and maple sugar. Here's a picture of a newer one, which would have been the Chapin apple orchard, um, the Chapin maple sugar orchard, and that's um, Claude um, Great and Chapin boiling right there. Thus you have our evaporators now, which has sections. They used to collect sap with horses or oxen, with buckets and collection tanks. It, was, it takes 40 buckets to make one gallon of syrup. So just like spout, maple sugar and collection areas have changed from the cloth wooden to wooden bucket metal bucket to pipelines. This is a tin pipeline in the 1920s. They tried that, but it didn't work and connect very well. 
when Joel puts together his plastic pipeline with the plastic spouts, he uses a vacuum system to suck more sap out of the tree. And he's always having to go through and fix shoes from fisher cats and squirrels and deer. So that's what happens with maple sugaring today, even though it's plastic and faster and easier with a vacuum to collect it all the time, not just during the warm daytime. You have to go fix your shelf line. Maple syrup was not able to be preserved until the 1930s because they didn't know how to make it hot enough yet. So therefore, they could have maple syrup, yes, but they had to boil all the water out of it before then to make maple sugar. Thus, instead of brown sugar, you had maple sugar that you went and bought in the store. The Native Americans used maple sugar. They had maple sugar cake. They had maple sugar molds or candy molds. Again, it went from wood to tin. Here's an old maple mold carved out from wood. Again, it evolved from wood to tin to metal. This is from the maple syrup co-op in Essex Junction that is that in, was in back of Five Corners Antiques next to the railroad tracks. They made maple syrup there and shipped it out. They also made maple sugar leaves and stuff. So things have changed as far as syrup to sh and sugar. The buckets, when they collected in the woods, if they had their initial on the bucket, they could dump it into their collection tank and turn it around so that the next time they collected, they would know, oh, I got that yesterday, I'm gonna to go to the next one. Not only that, it identified whose tree it was, because sometimes the properties were close together. Thus, you had painted red, blue, and green wooden buckets. You notice that there are changes in sizes? Well, in Canada, they said you can boil or tap a tree if it's no bigger than the bucket. So they have a smaller can, so you could tap the smaller tree. However, a sugar maple should not be tapped unless it's about eight inches in diameter. And that should only get one tap. And no matter how many more taps you put, even if it's a big tree like 10 buckets, you're not gonna get any more sap than you would from two. Thus you have one of my husband's uh, research things. He puts a hole where he taps the tree. That way he knows that's not where you tap it the next time. Because when you tap the tree, you go in about that far, an inch and a half, and that's where the sap is going up and down the trunk. And in the springtime, it's warm enough so that if you make a hole, it will spurt out into your spout. In the winter time, it's frozen. If it's too warm all the time, the sap's not gonna come out. It's gonna go up the tree to the leaves for the leaves. And this is the part of the wood that has been used for sap. This is where Joe had tapped, and that part of the wood is dead, so he would not get any more sap from that. That's why next time when he taps a tree, he'll look at his yellow spout and make sure it's far enough away from it. I said maple sugar, didn't I, as I look at this. Well, if you've got maple sugar and you've got to boil all the water out, it's going to be chunky. And this is a sugar devil. They use this to mix up the sugar so that it could be softer and able to be kept. The yolk, they collected the sap with yolks. There were children that helped to collect 